our character, our heritage, our lifestyle, everything we love about home. From the river to the lake, it's your town. And this is Town Talk. Let's do it. Okay. Hello and welcome to Town Talk. I'm your host, Doris Rappold, and today we have two vibrant, talented, creative, and versatile people with us from the Rivertown Performing Arts Theater. And we have Gary Rocker. Hello. And we have with us <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Hurling Bushy. Yes, thank and you. And so, welcome. Us. This Hello. is an exciting thing for me because I've seen a lot of your work. And I, I also told you before the show, I feel a little bit of a connection. <laughs> Kelly grew up around the corner from me, and um, Gary worked in the school system for a short period of time when I was with Jefferson Parish. And so, welcome. We're excited Thank to have you. you. Glad to be here. I know you have a lot of good news to tell us. Mm -hmm. and. I wanted to start out by asking you about Theater 13 and the management of the new theater. So can you tell us how that came about? Sure. Well, when the city of Kenner put out the proposal for a new management company, um, Gary and I already had our production company and we applied for the proposal and we're very grateful and lucky that the city of Kenner chose us. So Theater 13 is actually our company, our LLC, and we are the management company that runs the, the Rivertown Theater for the city of Kenner. Okay. So, are you the business mind behind it all? She's the pretty much the mind behind everything. She just—I thought she might just be the pretty. Yeah, I'm trying to be eye candy, but I can't compete, so I just let it. No, we uh, we we worked. Uh, I'm sure you know, but we worked at the theater for years, and that's kind of where we cut our teeth and became friends, and that's where we met, you know. And we've just, you know, we worked for such a long time, and just really felt like we wanted to do something more, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why we decided to go out on our own, and it was the scariest thing we ever did, but I can a, the best decision, mm -hmm. you know. Looking back, the best thing we ever did for I ourselves. Can imagine. You know. So your first season, how's it going? Well, well we're actually into our second season. Mm -hmm. We're three shows into our second season, right. and uh, we've already picked all our shows for next season. So you know, you always have to be thinking almost a full year ahead. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's going really, really great. We could not ask for better response from the audiences and uh, so much community support from our fellow actors mm -hmm. and fellow performers. Yeah. Um, of course, we'll always take more audience members and more season <laughs> ticket holders, and we'll get into that later. So what do you have but, going on right now? Uh, we have Annie in production right now, and we've just closed our first weekend, which was completely sold out, and we're so happy to say that almost the entire run is sold out. Uh, we had to add an extra performance, so we do still have some tickets available for our final weekend Thursday performance, which is Thursday, December 19th, and okay. it's a 7.30 p.m. show. And then you'll have um, Friday and Saturday of Friday, that week Saturday, and, and Sunday, Sunday of that weekend, yes. Wow, so all the way up until Christmas. We close on the 22nd, Speaking right. of Christmas, you guys have something, a great present for people to mm -hmm. give to others. Right. I mean, yeah. theater is a wonderful gift. Right, we keep pitching, you know, uh, give an experience instead of a thing. You know, people have plenty of stuff, so take your mom out to the theater for the night. You know, it's a great outing for people to do together. Yeah, what lots of people do is they buy gift certificates, and, you know, as soon as we announce the season, you can use your gift certificate. And, and you're not going to tell us about the new season yet, not, not right? At all. We're going to wait. Not at all. Okay, because. I'll, I'll tell you it's great, and here's the thing. We did our first season, and we, we thought it was pretty big and pretty splashy, and we're like, how do we really stay? step it up for season two. So of course we do 42nd Street and Annie and all these things. And we're like, okay, that's as much as we need to do. And then season three is like even more ridiculous and bigger <laughs> than that. It's like, well, I, don't know. Know, I don't know where the top is. But uh, I, don't think I mean, so think far, whatever you've attempted, right. you've been successful. Thank you. So that's really, that's really good. So tell me how you do actually choose the plays. Well, it's funny. We, we have a bit of a formula and, uh, you know, formula always sounds bad, but it, it does work for us. We always try to, we do, um, in our five show season, we do uh, three musicals, two non-musicals. Uh, we do try to do comedies, something um, a little bit more classic mm -hmm. and then something, you know, more new. And then for the musicals, we try to do uh, a newer show, um, a more classic show. Um, and then we always try to do one local show, like it's an original show written by a local person. So, for example, our first season, we did the class of 70-something, which was Carl right. Walker's big show. Um, and this year, we're doing an original show called, uh, it's, it's the next one that's up, it's called Under the Boardwalk. And it's an original New Orleans show. And Is we that have a musical one. review, basically? basically it is. Yeah. It's the Beach Boardwalk. Boys, Jersey Boys, yeah. and Motown. And we've uh, got a little trio of the Supremes in there. So yeah. if you oh, like anything okay. from that era, it's yeah. going to be a high energy It's, fun it's a night. lot of fun. So yeah. we, we try to support you know as much local talent as we can. And the playwrights 
you know, should have a place to produce their work too. So it's, we try to do something for everyone. There's a family show in there, something that you can bring the kids to, something that's really just for the adults, nothing offensive, but something that leave the kids at home and come mm -hmm. enjoy this. You know? sure. So we sure. just try to hit a little bit of everything. There's, some, there's something for everyone, but everything we'll, we do is something you'll like. You know. Yeah, we really do try and pay homage to the classics. Like we want to see them on stage, and we think that's important. But we also want to find out what's hot, what's new on Broadway right now that we can bring to New Orleans. Maybe hasn't come through on a tour, mm -hmm. or maybe came through a couple of years ago, did really well, and we want to put our spin on it. And, right. and it's a good mm -hmm. thing to do that sometimes because we talk about seeing things on on at a grand stage, mm -hmm. sort of like at the Sanger or somewhere right. like that. Right. But when they're brought to a small theater, they're you can relate much better. You can Absolutely. enjoy it better. You don't have as many people crowding you mm -hmm. around, and you do put your own spin on it, yeah. and so that works a lot. And we yeah. did have a lot of people tell us that about Spamalot that we did this summer. You well, know, they had said they had seen it before, but that they enjoyed our production so much more because it's very intimate, and they really felt like they could hear every joke and get all that Monty Python humor in a in a very intimate setting. That was unbelievable, yeah. hysterical. <laughs> I don't think I don't think anybody will ever forget this one with the coke. Coconut shells. I mean, everybody was like, "Oh no, yeah, you know, has got coconut shells." You know, so everybody thought that was fabulous. They're, and then the the people who were up in the yeah, in the castle. The French people. Oh, that was hysterical. Look, playing too. coconut shells is way harder. Like that, that does require a lot of talent to bang those things together. No, that was fun, yeah. both of you have such tremendous talent, though. You're both yeah. so extremely Thanks. versatile, and I know that you surround yourself with with good actors. Well, I think, I was gonna say, Spamalot was kind of the, the perfect example of what I think we are as a company. We said we wanted to do a summer show and almost had, like like summer camp when you were a kid, mm -hmm. and just surround yourself with your friends and have a really great time, you know, and that's what it was. We mm -hmm. just, it was all people that we really enjoyed working with and a really fun show, and I think the audience could tell that we were just up there having a great time, and I think that's, that's what we want our company to be. It's just well, a place where you can you come know, play. It becomes pervasive time. when you look at the people on the stage and you mm -hmm. see how they're acting and what they're doing right. and how much they enjoy it, and and it just pervades the yeah. audience. Yeah. You know, it's really, it was really a great thing. Um, do you? I know you mentioned something before I forget. You said adding a Thursday performance. Mm -hmm. Is that what you intend to do on a regular basis, well, or are our, you going to have Thursdays? For our regular season, we actually, our, our matinees were selling okay. They weren't selling as well as everything else. So what we did was we combined it into two matinees and added a Thursday night because there's a lot of theater people in town who want to see what we're doing, but they all work on the weekends too. So our Thursday nights have been extremely popular, actually. And um, so there'll always be one Thursday night offering on the season. Now for Annie, we were only running Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh -huh. So our holdover got to be a Thursday night, which helped us out. You know? It'll probably fill up coming before Christmas. Yeah, it's already. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's probably yeah, it's selling really, really quickly well. right so now. So get your tickets now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. When did you guys decide that you wanted to be on stage? I mean, obviously, you, you like are what, an actress, <laughs> a choreographer, and now you're a director. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when did you realize that you wanted to be on the, actually, in the footlights? You know, I mean, I grew up as a dancer, as a young dancer, but I really didn't start musical theater till high school. And um, I was so lucky to have my first experience at Tulane Summer Lyric, which is like top notch. Do you and remember what play? Yeah, it was Evita. And uh, I remember, you know, my first choral rehearsal, I was so blown away by the talent. And I just thought, you know, this is where I have to be. Uh -huh. And I did all three shows that summer, which is at such a fast summer stock pace. It is. You know, yeah. you just get inundated with it so fast. And, um, you know, I was hooked from there. And then I just started, actually started doing shows at Rivertown right after that. And it just felt like such a wonderful community and group of friends and people that I could connect with. Mm -hmm. And we all had similar interests. And, you know, you just get the bug and, you know, you start and Before I go it. on to Gary, I have, a, I have two things to mm -hmm. ask you. Number one, are you passing the torch? Because I know your um, husband is also an actor. Well, m no, not necessarily. He likes being in the background a little bit. I mean, he loves being on stage, but um, you know, as far as directing and choreographing, and you know, let that, me tell you about Mark. <laughs> Mark can do anything he wants. Yeah. He can sing. He can dance. He can. He's really funny. He's a great actor. But he's mm -hmm. like. Doesn't need it. Takes it in stride. It's like, come on, man. Like, you well, can't have all that also, talent and he not also did, did, did you, are you the one responsible for getting Mark on the stage? Oh, or? no. No, no, no. Mark, actually, Mark was doing a lot of shows in high school. You know, he was a part of the Genetians group at Rommel. Yeah, and okay. he and my sister used to do shows together. So I knew of him, but we didn't actually become friends until we started performing shows together at Rivertown. 
and then you know friends and then we developed obviously a relationship and now we're married and, and we have get children to, yeah we get to do shows together and somebody told me that you have the children on stage uh, my two little ones uh, my 10 year old and my seven year old are playing orphans and annie and they're just having the time of their life it's been amazing and this is the first show all four of us have been on stage together so it's a great experience for our family and there's a little nepotism going on over here too right yeah a little bit. <laughs> i mean in your family a little bit less but a little bit yeah <laughs> no my wife's in the show for I mean, she does shows with us at the theater and she's going to be in annie for one night the night of our one-year wedding anniversary we'll be singing easy street together and i think that's pretty appropriate yeah. for who we are <laughs> and then my son i tried my best to keep him out of this life but he does it too and he, uh, he was in Les Mis across the lake, and he played Gavroche, and he was wonderful. I cried the whole time. I was so proud of him. Aww. But now he's like, now he's big time. And you don't really mean <laughs> so. that you want to keep him out of this because you love the life you're leading. No, I, I do love it. It's you know? just, you I know. mean, it's obvious on stage. Yeah, it's Because you, you milk apart like nobody <laughs> I've ever seen before. I wouldn't mind I having a doctor. On stage with him. I wouldn't mind him being a doctor or a lawyer. Do you sometimes look at him and go, we didn't rehearse like this. Where, no, where is he going? We, we, Are you, like, do you stick to it pretty well? No, no. It doesn't matter, though. <laughs> I mean, we kinda, we're in a groove together when we're on yeah. stage, so kind of anything That's goes, the thing. If, it you, works. if you trust the people you're on stage with and know that they're listening and paying attention, you can do whatever you want. So. It's just amazing. I hear so many people say all the time, how do these people learn all these lines? Mm -hmm. How do they remember mm -hmm. every little nuance? And, and is it, if I, don't, if I come tomorrow, will they make the same gestures they made today? Mm -hmm. Or, or do More they or change less. up? Yeah. I think it depends I mean, for each actor. You know, um, some people like to be very much in a groove and stay very consistent, and some people like to change it up every night. You know, it you depends. Know, if you're truly in the moment and invested mm -hmm. with your fellow actors, it's gonna change because you know you've had a different experience that day, and things are gonna be different. So that's what but, makes live theater so yeah, it's, it's what's amazing. so great about it. Yeah. And my my question, I didn't, I, I meant to ask you this and forgot. What is your favorite role now? Is it is it uh, to be a director? Is it to be a choreographer? Is it to be an actress? What of those three? Which is your favorite? Wow, they all come with different um, stress levels <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, rewards. They honestly do. So I, it really would depend on the project to say which hat I'd prefer to wear. Um, obviously, if it's a role that's you know I really want to sink my teeth into, that's what drives me. But if it's a show that I really want to get my hands on and feel like I want to put my stamp on it. And I'm like a, a, a neat freak, like as far as a show being tight and clean. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. if it's something I feel like I can really, you know, tweak to my liking, then I would love to be a part of the creative team instead. So it really just depends on what project we're choosing. Okay. And Gary and I, when we pick our season, you know, you, you know, a lot of magic happens in our office where we decide what shows are going to work. You know, we kind of envision a possible cast because you can't pick a show without having some idea Somebody that you can in mind, cast it. Of course, yeah. And um, which one we feel like are going to, where we can lend our best strengths, you know, as that far as the creative a creative team. Sense. And we're, we love bringing in different directors and choreographers. Like, believe me, we don't want to be on the team for every show. You know, we would oh, love to open it up to that. other yeah. artists. And that just helps us do our job better when well, we don't have to Well, it seems to me to that it. that's what community theater is about. Absolutely. It's not just a show place for the the two people who run right, the business, right. you know. Yeah. And you, you dance, you sing, you act, you do pratfalls, you do, I mean, you do all kinds. I do everything but sleep. And, well, that's, that's, I don't know about that, but that's probably true. What is your favorite thing to do? I, I think it's it's kind of what Kelly said. You know, I like I like acting for a great director, and I like directing great actors, you know. So, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I like, I just like the camaraderie, and like, like Kelly said, wherever I best, my, I best fit that project, you know. Mm -hmm. There are some shows that I know this is not the show I should be directing. I don't necessarily need to be in it, but it's something we should absolutely do, and we just need to bring the, the best people to do that show, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it, you know, under the boardwalk, we have very little creatively to do mm -hmm. with it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're doing some design things, and we're going to come watch and make sure it's, you know, up to the standard we like to have, but we, we backed away and let the people who are the best at doing that thing do it, mm -hmm. you know, and we just have to trust them. Let me ask you something. Do you like to do serious work? I love to do serious mm -hmm. work, and I wish anyone in New Orleans would buy a ticket to go see some serious work, but no one wants to see that. I mean, they want to see musicals yeah. or comedies. Every you season know. We, we throw around some titles that we really want to, you know, that have a lot of heart mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, are serious and, and have a great intention, and we just know that as business you know, people yeah. that it's not going to sell. Well, I, I understand that because when I, when I go to the theater, I see the kinds of people who are there right. and, and they're very similar to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I would like to see something serious mm -hmm. every now and then, but right. there are a lot of people who go there for the levity and for the, for the happiness sure. and for the enjoyment right. and for the, 
the comedy of it all. Yeah. I guess my thought was when you think about somebody like, um, okay, um, the guy who did Patch Adams and the guy, yeah, Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah. Robin Williams when mm -hmm. you think about his doing something like Mrs. Doubtfire and, and right. making you laugh, but also there's a poignancy there right. to where he really can wrench your heart. And that's why I was asking if you enjoy doing something yeah, like I, that. Yeah, I love it. It's, you know, what we have to be careful of is getting to do the things that we really want to do artistically versus can we keep the door open another two months? I agree. Because is anybody going to bother to come see I it? I agree. You know? And it's that a is, fine line we have to walk. Another, well, that's know, a consideration in the business. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I know, mean, we do, we, we first start from the business platform and decide what, what are the best choices for us as a business uh -huh. and how can we best serve our customers. And then after that, we get to add some artistic, you know, right. opinion on things. And that's good. I want to ask you this. Um, I was just thinking about this because I've seen a lot of plays that you guys are in. And mm -hmm. do you have any favorite roles that you've played? Wow. Um, <laughs> I, the, yeah, I mean, I think um, Crazy For You was my first big role that I got to have, and it was huge. I got to sing all these beautiful Gershwin music uh -huh. and perform on stage with Gary, which was really fun because we had done a lot of things creatively but not mm. actually performed together in that um, vein before. And then, of course, performing opposite my husband is always a joy. I, so, saw, um, I saw you all in Barefoot in the Barefoot was fun. It was, uh, yeah, it was Damn cute. Yankees yeah. was I saw you in great. something else, too. I'm trying to think. And then uh, recently we did Drowsy Chaperone, which oh, that, was another yeah. one That's of those experiences wonderful. I saw that. with yeah, like, that was all great. of our favorite people that I got to be on stage with. So, we'll, I mean, I'll never forget that. That was great. What about yeah. you, Gary? Any favorite roles? The, I mean, my... I'm having a great time in Annie, honestly. <laughs> like it's it's a role I've always loved doing, and I'm having a really great time doing it now. You want to tell people what that is? I'll play Rooster, the bad guy. I figured. <laughs> when I you knew, think smarmy, I, knew. I guess. But, um, smarmy. For me, I, I I was thinking about that question, and for me, it's like it's it's stop like we've done this so long. It's stopped being about what the role is, yeah. and it's it's becoming who I'm surrounded with. Mm -hmm, the experience. You know? mm -hmm. And it's like you know like getting to work with Kelly like in her first directing show mm -hmm. and being on stage with her and Lara and doing that like to me it didn't matter what the lines were or what it was it was mm -hmm. I like I like going to rehearsal and hanging out with those guys you know that's how spam a lot was so I tend to gravitate more towards like who I'm gonna get to play with rather than <laughs> what I'm gonna get to say you know any favorite lines that you can remember yeah but this is my favorite moment ever on stage and it wasn't even like for me the lines are anybody can say the lines but mm -hmm. it's just moments between the lines like when you're doing a take or right just holding <laughs> and waiting for people to laugh uh -huh. you know but we did um, the 39 steps and I had this exit. I was supposed to be saying good night, but kind of like lingering and not uh -huh. really leaving the room. Right, right. And we had a challenge, and every night they challenged to see how long I could make this exit. <laughs> and closing night, I had a two-minute challenge to see if it could, if I could make this exit last for two minutes. I'm sure and you, I'm God, sure you like, met it. It was like a minute fifty, and they were still laughing. And the people on stage were like, "Go!" And I'm like, oh, two minutes. So well, that was know, a lot of fun. What's funny about you bringing up that moment is it apparently had an effect on people because my daughter at the time was like five. And she used to reenact it at home. Like she'd be walking out the door frame and she'd be doing all doing of Gary's little, like, bits. Finger bits. <laughs> so it made an impact. The so. reason I ask you about that is because I, I know you have Young Frankenstein coming yeah. up. And I remember seeing the movie, and Cloris Leachman was the the housekeeper right. or Prabuka. And, and, yeah, if I, if I could nail like the horses, I would, <laughs> right. but I can't do it right now. But do that anyway. In post. Okay. Like, yeah. But she was so so strong and so strict. Right. And so conservative, more or less. Right. And I remember the scene when she was coming down the steps and she was playing the violin. Right. And I don't know who's going to be doing that in your play, but right. she's playing it and the, and the guy finally realizes it and he says, you, all the time, you were, and, and she said something totally out of character. She said, yes, yes, I was his girlfriend. <laughs> right. He was my boyfriend, yeah. you right. know. And it was so out of character. Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that... Well, it's funny, that's that, a whole song. In, in the show. Oh, is it really? He was my boyfriend. Is an entire number that she does. And so. it's just so out of character right. for her, you know, that it was one of the funniest things ever. But it's I funny know. because she plays it so truthfully. And that's where comedy she comes did. from. It's just, she it's did. It's that honest moment, you know. She did. And so. I was um, have a few other questions that I wanted to ask you about what you might be doing um, in the near future uh -huh. and what you might be doing in the summer. Sure. And so uh, we're going to take a short break, okay. and I want you to be thinking about the things that you want to tell this captive audience. Right. You know, of course, they can turn us off, but hopefully they won't. Well, why would they? No, they I do. mean, look at this. You have to pay for this ticket. Look at the performances <laughs> you're getting. So please come back and join us for the second half of our interview with these two tremendously talented people. Hello, 
welcome back to Town Talk. I'm your host, Doris Rappold, and today we're talking about the Rivertown Theater for Performing Arts. And we have two of the mainstays of the theater with us. Uh, we have Gary Rucker with us, and we also have with us Kelly Fushi. And so welcome back, Thank you. and um, let's get started on something that's very important mm -hmm. to the theater. Um, and that is uh, a fundraiser that you guys have coming up. Yes. Did you want to tell our viewers about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's our... Uh, you go ahead. I'll go. All right. It's our uh, <laughs> the second time we're doing it. You know, we always feel that when you announce a season, it should be a big deal. And uh -huh. we want everybody to get really excited about it and come celebrate it. So we uh, did it last year and went really well. So we decided to make it an annual tradition. And it's uh, January 3rd. Yeah, and uh, it's only twenty dollars, and all the proceeds from the you know it's a fundraiser, so it all goes right back into the production and you know operation. So of that's the a Friday night, right? Right, Friday yes. night. Okay. And basically, it, we, we do our season announcement. We do a preview of Under the Boardwalk, and then we do uh, a number from each of the musicals that we have coming up oh, next really? season. Mm -hmm. We talk about the shows. We we always do a Q and A because we know people obviously want to know. Well, so um, tell me how, how it goes, works. like from from the from the onset. First of all, the tickets you said are $20. Right. Uh, how do you get those? You can call the theater, uh, just like you purchased a ticket to the show. Just call and okay. just say you want a ticket for that. And you, could you also, can also go online. Yeah, get it okay. on our Okay, would you give us the telephone number sure. so sure. we can put it on the screen for our viewers? The box office is 461-9475. Okay. And the website is rivertowntheaters.com. Okay. It's easy, and you can just click the little spot that says buy yeah, tickets. Buy ticket, yeah. Right. Actually, I've bought tickets online. It's very convenient. Yeah, so, it's simple. So we can go to season party. How will it be? Yeah, a uh, annual season announcement party, and you'll see okay. it for, the, for yeah, January 3rd. It should be right at the top. Yeah. And, okay. Um, and so the evening starts. We'll have cocktails and hors d'oeuvres, and we're also going to have a silent auction. Now, wait. Is that all the cocktails? That's included in the $20? $20. $20. Everything for $20? $20. Deal? It is a deal. Okay. <laughs> okay. So tell me Plus the rest. a show. Okay. So <laughs> you were taking me from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So cocktails and hors d'oeuvres. And then we do a silent auction with some really great items and also some unique theatrical items that, you, you know, you can't put a value on. Like mm -hmm. uh, we did a walk on roll on some of the shows that we're doing oh, or right. like a front, you know, parking spot for the entire season. Um, the uh, parking spot was our best seller. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Because you get it's reserved for whatever night you want to come. <laughs> I'm and then not surprised. We did the walk on yeah. roll and spam a lot. And uh, the lady who won was she was cool. She came to rehearsal and yeah, it was just so she fun. got her own she, costume. Yeah, it was, it was, really great. It was a lot of fun just to so have. So we like, tried to offer up some unique experiences that uh -huh. you know you might not get somewhere else. Um, we had tickets. You could watch the show from backstage. You know, so you sit in the wings and uh, maybe you come see it the night before, but then the next night you come and watch the whole thing from backstage just to see how it all unfolds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so some unique items like that, and then uh, we move everyone into the theater and we do like an hour long show. And like Gary said, we'll do musical numbers from the shows that are coming up for the next season. So right. you get a little preview of what we'll be presenting. And um, we're actually, this year we're going to do a big video montage of everything that we've done since we've taken over the theater. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for us to be, to give back and thank everyone that's worked with us. And like Gary said, get really pumped up about what's coming up. And you can start buying your season tickets now if you'd like, right. or um, that's, you know, a big night for sales for us as well. And the season tickets you can get online as well, yes. or by calling the theater. Yes, you can yeah. call the theater. And, mm -hmm. and we're talking about community theater and we're going to talk a little bit more and um, about the night mm -hmm. again toward the end of the show mm -hmm. but speaking of community theater I mean obviously there's a reason for having this night because how is community theater actually supported I mean for us you know we're in a really unique situation we don't have any corporate sponsors we don't get grants we operate on ticket sales and donations and it's really the only way we can keep the doors open is just by people supporting what we're doing by mm -hmm. purchasing a ticket or I mean any amount of donation absolutely helps. None of it goes to our pocket. It all goes right back into our product because that's the thing we believe in, you mm -hmm. know? And um, we're very lucky. I mean, you know, the actors, directors, it's everyone who is in the community, believes in what we're doing. They all have other jobs, you know? Some people will teach class, run home and take a shower and then come to rehearsal, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, that's, that's how we operate, you know? The best way you can support the theater, honestly, is to buy season tickets. I mean, that helps us plan ahead. And like we said, we've already, paid for the rights through 2015. So we're taking a leap of faith that people are going to continue to come to the theater. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want to bring big titles. We want to bring big shows. So if we can get our season ticket holders, you know, to buy those seats in advance, it helps us support well, if you know, you, what we if, plan. If somebody buys a season ticket and, and then wants to ante up um, a mm -hmm. little extra money, is there any motivation for them to do that? If somebody oh, yeah. donates, say, $50 mm -hmm. or $100, um, 
what would they get something in return for that extra? You do, and I, I wish I could remember off the top of my head what it was. And we have a we have yeah. a, a package for different levels, like the benefits that you get, and that's listed on our website as well. Yeah. Okay, okay, it would not be beneficial for us to try and quote. No, no, I don't. Want, I don't want you to do that because it wouldn't be. I don't think I'm everybody will remember up, it right? anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't think people will remember right. anyway. Is it also listed in your program? Uh, the the, the donors' names are listed in the yeah, program. Okay. You can choose, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we always list you makes the, the different the levels. Program. Yeah, obviously. And we should mention we are happy to take a corporate sponsor. Yeah. You know, I mean, we would love yeah, to. Yeah, which, which camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah. I mean, we are honestly doing. Want to give your cell number? <laughs> some of the biggest titles out there right now, and they cost a fortune. They really do. But we want to keep raising the bar and keep bringing the best that we possibly can. So. And at we the would same time, trying to keep the ticket prices. Right. Um, in, in, in a range where people yeah. can right. afford to I go. I mean, it is a little surprising to me when I, I mean, I'm a season ticket holder for Mahalia and have been for the Sangers uh -huh. since before Katrina. And when I go and see the amount of people that support the Broadway tours that come through, I'm always thinking as a producer, where are they, you know, for local and community theater when the prices are so much less expensive, the parking is free, and the quality is there. So we just hope people will give us a try. If they come out, you know, our motto is once they come, we know they'll come back because we really do believe in our product. Yeah. And, and that's, that means so much because mm -hmm. you, there's some devotion there and you can't mistake that. And this that's is, what makes know, it so good. We do a unique thing too. We, you know, for our season opener, we always say, come try us out. If you didn't like the show, what's wrong with you? But if you did like the show, then you can convert that into a season ticket and we'll credit your, your ticket purchase, your full price ticket purchase, and we'll, we'll credit you that if you want to become a season ticket holder. Mm -hmm. and let me tell you, 42nd Street, you wouldn't believe the people who went right to the box office and you know, got season tickets. So. Well, people are skeptical until they get involved. Right. Until yeah. they go to the first play yeah. and yeah. see it and say, sure. I, well, I, think, I like this. I think yeah. the words community theater have such a negative, but it doesn't, ha I mean, it just happens to be by people in the community. Doesn't mean those people are any less talented or any less passionate. Right. You know, no, and it's it, wonderful community theater. In and it, it really shouldn't. Um, it shouldn't frighten people because we talked earlier about the pr the big productions mm -hmm. and right. how much more intimate the community right. theater is. And you get to know the people. Right. And Gary and I talked earlier too about the people who perennially show up in different right. plays. Mm -hmm. And Gary made mention of, of one guy that everybody's seen a hundred times because you tell me Michael's play. Yeah, Michael Sullivan. <laughs> His big thing is he's played every priest in every play in every theater. Yeah, right. It's fun. So, I mean, that's, yeah. But. So, I mean, people know him. You know, yeah. when he comes on, yeah. they go, oh, I know yeah. him. He was, the, he right. was this, he was that. Right. You know? And it's funny because I think that's why Spamalot worked for us the way it did because a lot of people saw it at the Sanger. But mm -hmm. when you don't know those people, it's not as fun, but knowing, like, you know, people see us, they know me, they know Ricky, they, they you know, know David sure. and Mark. Mm -hmm. So when they see it, you kind of feel like you're in on it a little mm -hmm. bit, uh -huh. and you have ownership of it, because uh -huh. that's that's someone you know, and that's someone, you exactly. know. Exactly, and, that, and that's kind of why I wanted to interview you all personally before the break and ask you about your accomplishments mm -hmm. and your favorite things, because people need to know right. the people. I agree with you totally. Right. If if uh, there are some starstruck people in the community who want to try their hands at acting, um, mm -hmm. what would you suggest they do, and how do they get in touch with somebody to give them a chance? Well, basically, we have any time we ha we have open auditions for everything, and we're very honest. People think that everything's already already cast. It's not. We always say these are the roles that are available, and it's on our Facebook page, um, the Riverton Theater's Facebook page. We put it on our Theater 13 Facebook. We put it on our website. Mm -hmm. um, we do put it in the paper, but we just find so few people. Of the demographic that's going to come audition, read the paper. Mm -hmm. so, well, so social, busy. yeah, <laughs> social media. Social is. media is really our, our yeah. biggest, you know, mm -hmm. help when it comes to that. But we post everything that we're doing. Actually, we have auditions coming up um, in the next few weeks for some of the children's shows we're doing um, for Ladies of the Camellias. Like mm -hmm. that's all coming coming up soon. So. And that's something I wanted to ask you about. I'm glad you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. Do you have something coming up in the summer for kids? Yeah, yeah. We, we do have a thriving children's theater, and we're really excited that we've been able to convert the old theater mm -hmm. into a thriving theater space right. again. I mean, we've completely renovated it. Mm -hmm. um, we've added some seating in there. We, we built some risers so that it can have raised seating. And uh, we have a full season for children. So we're the next thing coming up, in fact, right now, yeah. is The Amazing True Story of Santa Claus, which is such a sweet little one-hour show that's just Santa himself in his own musical 
show and he talks about you know how Santa became Sa how Saint so Nick is became that Santa. Going on right now. It's, right. Yeah, it's the it's next, the next two, Saturdays. two Saturdays, and we say that we recommend it for for kids all the way through grandparents. It's just so. Can you buy those tickets mm -hmm. online too? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I think they're only what ten dollars. Yeah, it's or like something? ten dollars. We just really wanted to make it available to the community. Come do something really mm -hmm. fun and spirited and yeah. sweet during it's, Christmas. It's so beautifully charming. I love it. And like, I'm not saying I'm a Grinch, but I'm like. I don't want to have to go put up a tree. And mm -hmm. last year when I saw the show, I'm like, I want to hang garland. Like I was so like, so motivated. You sound like Fred Claus. You see that movie? Yeah. But he, it was like, he's you know, converted yeah. at the end too. It, it's just so sweet and, and simple and beautiful, but in magical, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's just a wonderful thing for kids to see, you know. And well, do you guys run that program, the children's program, yeah. or does somebody else run it? No, we run it yeah. because, because why not? You know, <laughs> but you know, that's it's something we're very passionate about, at children's theater. And um, actually, this summer, since you asked, um, I've been a member of the Patchwork Players for 15 years at uh -huh. Tulane. Well, last year we brought the Patchwork Players to Rivertown, and now we're the new permanent home of the Patchwork Players. So we'll be doing two shows each summer. Um, they're gonna do that. Um, and then, you know, in, we have a, a, a show coming up in February. We're doing Cinderella Battistella, which is a New Orleans <laughs> Cinderella. And we have um, Pinkalicious coming up. So we do five or six children's shows a year, too. Yeah, Grease. Mm -hmm. Did you not? We did, did Grease with the kids. Junior, yeah. like the school yeah. edition with our team. We did 13 the musical just recently. So, right. And the kids yeah. really loved all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, it's a good opportunity for the, the kids to get on stage in a lead role, you know, mm -hmm. and to kind of develop their talents. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, a lot of those kids, we needed dancers in 42nd Street, so they got to be on the main stage. So, you know, they kind of moved themselves well, up. You yeah, know. you're fostering the talent right. and building it, helping mm -hmm. to build the talent. Right. So do you all have any, any major plans for anything, like major plans in regard to in the plant, in regard to the stage, and anything that you all want to do, a goal maybe well, that you have in mind? You know, we, we, when we moved in, we renovated like 90% of that building because it, mm -hmm. just, it, was, it just needed it. Um, right now, as we speak, the uh, city of Kenner is rebuilding the Children's Theater Stage Forest because it was just run down. Mm -hmm. So they're doing that right now. Um, we are, there's a church that uses our space on Sunday morning, and they're helping us change out the doors in the Children's Theater. That's and then good. our last big project is we'd love to renovate the, the main stage audience like the house itself mm -hmm. um it's just it's time for an update but it's such a big project and it's so expensive that we just we need the support to do it financially yeah i mean um, we should probably point out just because from what we hear from our patrons there seems to be some confusion um, any renovations to the building is our responsibility. The city of Kenner does not assume that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if we want to upgrade the theater, if we want to paint it, or like you said, we, we recarpeted and painted and sheetrocked walls, and th that is our responsibility. So our first season, that was really coming out of ticket sales, and we were just rolling the dice that our mm -hmm. second season would help mm -hmm. you know, supplement that. And, and we see it from our patrons. They can see the difference in the space. And it, it makes them excited when they come because everything's been updated. Do you all need volunteers to do that sort of thing? Always. Oh, yeah. We need volunteers Always. like crazy. So okay. and no matter what your talent is, we can use yeah. it. So just get in touch with us. <laughs> if, and even if you don't know you have one. Right. We'll find they just show yeah. up, right? <laughs> huh? If they just show up. Anybody can hold a paintbrush. That's, That's right. Easy. And so... Um, I guess before we close, you have an audience, and they're watching you right now, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, do you have anything to say to them? Just buy tickets. You'll mm -hmm. you'll be shocked at how much you'll enjoy it. And you do I have think. a range for tickets, too, don't you? I mean, you have a dog. Yeah, there's, there's have... students, there's seniors, there's a, a kid's price with the students, there's general admission. But our most expensive ticket is still cheaper than almost anything else. And they're all res it's all reserved seating, yeah. usually. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's a 300-seat theater. There's not a bad seat in the house. I mean, it's you can see, you can hear. It's... It's a big theater that has a very intimate feel, which is, mm -hmm. you know, what we love about it. And, so. and you get to be part of the group that attends, too, right. when you go, because you, you end up going usually the same time right. yeah. you see your for each play, member and you walk up there, and it's like, hey, how are you? Yeah. You know, it's people you didn't know before, but you know them now because yeah, you, you, you go get to at know. the same time. Right, exactly. you know, so that and makes you know, and the, nice. Kelly and I, we want to be very accessible, so we're always at the shows. We're always talking to people. At the season announcement party, we mm -hmm. do a Q&A, so mm -hmm. that if people have any questions, we love talking to people, so we just want everybody to know that if you see us, if you have questions, come talk to us. You and know. it's important too mm -hmm. when you guys are out there after the show, yeah. you know, especially especially if you've appeared in the right. show and right. you're out there and people are shaking it. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, went to a play recently and some of the actors came out afterwards, but they were collecting for a charity. That mm -hmm. was part of what they did. Right. And everybody was in line waiting to take pictures right. with the person, and they loved 
they love communicating. I mean, right. I'd see you after a play, and I'd say, I'm you running know, around. You know, <laughs> everybody's happy to see that. Yeah. They want to see the people who sure. run the place. Right. Okay, this is what, what I want to do. I want you to name what you have going now until the end of the season. So you have, after Annie, what do you have? We have Under the Boardwalk. And when is that? That's in January. It opens January Okay. 10. And this okay. is just the main stage we're talking about. Right. And then we have uh, The Ladies of the Camellias, which is in March. Okay. And that's, it's very funny. No one knows the title, but it's, it's really a funny show. And then we close our main stage season with uh, Young Frankenstein in May. Okay. And then yeah. this Ladies of the Camellia thing, I was... I was not aware of right. what it was, and I read the synopsis, and I thought, yeah. okay, I really want to see mm -hmm. this, yeah. and this is something I really want to see. And as I told you, I'm trying to convince some of my friends mm -hmm. to let their hair down and go yeah. see Young Frankenstein, <laughs> okay? But um, I'm really ex interested in seeing it. It's probably going to be one of those plays where word of mouth will help a lot. Right. Yeah, it's a farce, you know, yeah. and it's going to yeah. be just yeah. ridiculous and funny and silly, and, yeah. you know, yeah. it's and, always and a great And sometimes when people don't know anything about the play, if they hear it from their friends, yeah. and that, that's another it's thing, It's one of the too. things, I know all the fun surprises, but I don't mm. want to give them away. But no. there's so many things in the show that's it's just really funny, and okay, you know, so it's, we've, it's a good time. So yeah. we've got that going, and to get tickets, where would we call if we did telephone? You call the box office at 461-9475, or okay. you can order 24-7 online okay. at rivertowntheaters.com. And one other thing that we do want to say to especially the residents of Kenner, it surprises us how many people even live in Kenner and say, I didn't even know that was there. Yeah. I didn't even know we had a theater. Come to Rivertown, come out to the area. We are so lucky to have this beautiful courtyard and these two beautiful buildings in this quaint little area where you can park, feel safe, it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. You can go park, go to dinner, walk right over to the theater. It's just a great night out and we just hope that people will come experience it and like we said before, we feel like they will come back once they yeah. come. Well, there are, and, and you're right, and there are about people not realizing it, but there are big plans for Rivertown mm -hmm. and, and the more people we can get to Rivertown, the more business right. we can generate. Right. And the theater is actually the hub right now. I mean, right. we bring in 30,000 individuals throughout a one year period. That's huge yeah. to the Rivertown area and so of course we would love to have more because mm -hmm. we'd love to have more season ticket holders and that helps us plan bigger and better things. But, um, you know, the theater's kind of a hot thing right now, mm -hmm. so come and check it out. <laughs> okay, and so one more time, the fundraiser is? January 3rd, tickets are only $20, and we'd appreciate the support, plus it's a great evening. And I understand in the past it's been a tremendous turnout. Yeah, I mean, last year there were people standing along the sides, and, you know, I know what the season is, so mm -hmm. you want to be there to hear it. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be great. Well, I certainly want to thank both of you, two busy people. I know, oh, no, you, I know that you have Annie going on right now, yeah. and I, and I know it's not easy to it's been perform. A joy. It's yeah, been well, a joy. and that's good because that's what it's all about. I think with the two of you, I think yes, you're in a business but you're doing something you love, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. I think it shows. Oh, we're not retiring on the theater. I don't think a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah. No, we it, both it, have other full-time jobs outside right, of this. And, it, so. and it's like any other, it's like any other art. It, it, people are, are in it because they love it. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the more they love it, the better they are at it, and, and obviously that's what we see with the two of you. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much well, for coming, you for both of you. It was a pleasure. Anytime. We'll see you, at, <laughs> see you, so you in the much. lobby. That's okay. right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. See you in the lobby. That reminds me of the old drive-in. Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> right. you know, well, I am dating myself again. <laughs> I do that regularly on these shows. But thank you for tuning in today, and I hope that you will find it in your heart to support community theater in Kenner and come out on January 3rd for the announcement of the new season for the Rivertown Performing Theater. Performing Arts Theater. Got to get that right. It's a mouthful, man. <laughs> so come back next time to Town Talk. I don't know that we'll have as good a time, but we'll have an informative time. Thanks for tuning in.